Hello, welcome everybody. It's been ages since I've done a live and this is the first live with the new channel name. So I don't know if, if you're just tuning in, my channel is no longer called Lunar Wisdom, it's just Cricket Song. Um, so here we are today with Jasmine Ambrosia. I'm sure you Hello. all recognize her. She's been a guest on the channel before. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's always yeah. a pleasure. This is always fun. Always fun. Um, today we're talking about left hand path versus right hand path. That's mm -hmm. a good topic. Um, and I have no notes, no nothing. So we're just we're just winging it tonight. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Cool. Um, welcome. I know we have about what three people in the lobby. Don't be shy. Please feel free to chime in, ask questions, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah. So. How do we begin? Where do you want to begin? Well, why don't we start with defining in our own words? Because this is, okay. this is, that's normally what you do, right? Is define. Yeah, that's what, what I used to do. <laughs> it's yeah. Like it's been, it's been <laughs> ages since I've done a, a live. I see too that um, someone has commented already saying like the self versus source, selfish desire versus altruistic workings, Lucifer okay. versus Michael, five versus six, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I see that too. Um, and like, I agree with some of that and I also don't like, but I think that how I would define the left-hand path is one of the first things that sticks out to me is that I feel like it's more individual focused. Mm -hmm. It's more, it is more self-focused. So I agree with that. And then the alternative, the right-hand path is definitely more community focused. And so I guess I can see like the whole source bit. Um, I'm not crazy about like the Lucifer Michael comparison personally. I also think too, that like this terminology that we're using or that witches are using between the left-hand path and the right-hand path is something that's like tantric that we've just kind of like taken this terminology, like, and we've just kind of, I don't want to use the word appropriated it, but like we've, brought it into this occult setting. Um, and yeah, I think that um, a lot of Abrahamic mainstream religions can fall under the right-hand path category. Mm -hmm. But I do also think that plenty of pagan religions can fall under the right path category too. Mm -hmm. um, and I also don't think that left-hand path automatically just equals like, Satanism or Luciferianism, even like I think that those two um, belief systems are definitely prominent. But like mm -hmm. the left hand path itself is more like we're looking at ideologies of like self and the empowerment of self and uh, literally being like a god. Yeah. Versus, I feel like the right hand path is more like community and. Um, I mean, there can, there's obviously definitely deity, I would say, in the right-hand path as well, but I think it's more so about an external divine source versus the divine source being within. So that's kind of how I would explain it in my own words. Yeah, I, I agree with you, like, almost 100%. Um, I see the left-hand path as I am God, and the right-hand path is I am communing or trying to reach Godhead or trying to, you know, become enlightened and be one with God where the left-hand path is I am a living God. Mm -hmm. um, that's the difference I see. So like the right-hand path is very altruistic where I can see where you're saying community is a part of that. But usually when I think of right-hand path, um, I think of people doing things for the good of all, for the good of humanity, for the good of, of the world, and when I see the left-hand path, it's more of I'm more focused on being ex an example of what can be achieved in mm -hmm. the divine way, you know, a manifestation of God or the divine within me. And I'm an example of that and living by example. That's mm -hmm. how I see the two. Um, my first introduction to the term left-hand path was through Satanism. Uh, through a friend who was Satanist. And at the time I had just started studying witchcraft. So that was my introduction to what left-hand path was. And I found that there was a lot of um, 
fold over, like a similarity to what I was studying and believing and following <clears throat> with Satanism. So when I was Christian, it would have been all right hand path for me, for the Christian denominations I was part of. It was very altruistic and very right hand path. Um, now is like a same, same. Like I, I consider myself to have like left leanings. Like I feel like I, I lean to the left a little bit, you know. Uh, but I don't, I don't really particularly identify with like either. I think right. that both of these ideologies actually can be really dangerous. Like most things, when taken to like the extremes, like where you have cults and like hate groups and like crazy stuff like that. Like, and I also think that there's a big misconception that people automatically assume that the right hand path is the right hand path. It's the right path. Like, right. and I think people assume that the left hand the path, path is, is like, the wrong path. <laughs> right. Is bad or is wrong or, you know, is evil even. And I think that like, you know, even for, people who maybe didn't even grow up Christian, at least for us here in the States, Christianity. And I feel like Abrahamic religion is just so entrenched in our world that I definitely think that this idea of like, kind of promoting selfishness, like, um, is really can be also very toxic. It and, yes. and I think sometimes also, and something else I think that's interesting in this conversation is I don't typically see people identifying as a right-hand pather, like, but people on the left-hand path are like paint it everywhere they possibly can. Six, six, sixes, hail Satan's, right. like whatever they can possibly do to like almost get a reaction. Like, it's like, I don't know you've got like super egotistical light worker, Lori over here, you know what I mean? And then you've got like super edge Lord Aaron over here. Like they're both obnoxious <laughs> and annoying. <laughs> right, right. I, I, I think, and this is just my thought, my opinion, take it for what it is. I think left hand path followers tend to post it everywhere because what you mentioned that it's just sort of given that everybody's right hand path, like it's just assumed. So left-hand path want to separate themselves from that. So I think they feel a need to paint it everywhere. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Well, and I think some of them like definitely enjoy the reactions that they get, sure. like for sure. I mean, I know that for myself, I think a little blasphemy can go a long way. You know right, I mean? right. <laughs> Sorry, my cat. You're fine. I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely into that. I'm definitely into that. And like, like I said, overall, I would say I feel like I identify more leaning left, but like there is also the middle path too. And I right. think that that's where a lot of witches think that they are. I wonder. I mean, I do. I think I like, I ha I'll, I'll go over to the left hand and then squirm back over to the right hand, kind of like a serpent, you know? Um, right. I think I have more left path leanings than people tend to think I do. Um, and see, I feel the opposite. I feel like I, I know I think right people, hand path leanings then. <laughs> and I think people think you're more left hand than right. I agree. And I think people think I'm more right than left. So uh -huh. isn't that, that's weird, huh? Well, that's kind of why I thought this would be a fun, when we were thinking about topics, just because like you and I, we are very alike in some uh -huh. ways, but we do also, you know, due to culture and geography and other things, like we have our differences too. And that's what, like, it's nice having these conversations because it doesn't just feel like a circle jerk of yes men. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but we have enough, in, we have enough commonality, but yeah, like I was having this conversation with some of, um, you know, some of the folks at the shop and then also some of the coven can. And like, I was like, you know, the fact that we are coven witches makes us so RHP, like in my eyes, like, because yes, this I is agree. going into like this organized and this tradition and like this system. And um, I feel like a lot of, and, but that's the kind of the catch 22 there too. Cause I feel like a lot of left-hand path, witches like really want to push away this whole sense of conformity, but then they yet, conform to not conforming to 
Like, you know what I mean? The satanic temple. Like, there's a temple. Like, yeah. And I totally agree with you because when I was part of a coven, I felt I was more right hand path. And I think, like you were saying earlier, that's part of the community and working for the community and being uh, sort of um, a, a facilitator to bridge uh, community. Where now that I'm not coven associated at all, I feel like I'm definitely more left-hand path than I've ever been. Yeah. That's what I think is so interesting because I think people would automatically assume the opposite of both of us. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like I said, I have, I definitely have left-hand path leanings, but I do think that I, I find, you know, if you are any witch of any sort of tradition, especially like we've said, if you're in a coven or if you're following like a specific branch of paganism, like to me, that is very RHP, not LHP. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. So I, for me, the left-hand path comes in because I do believe that the witch can empower themselves mm -hmm. to that of like a God. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that God exists around us also. Like I don't, I'm not atheistic. And I feel like a lot of left-hand pathers tend to be more atheistic. In my yeah. experience, at least, like there's there's spiritual Satanists, I guess, and there's Luciferians. That's what I was going to say. I knew and a couple, right, Luciferians. I knew back in the day I associated with a Luciferian, and then I did a, I did have friends who were pure Satanist, no divinity. There, that was it. You know, they were a manifestation of whatever they were. So I do feel like deity can come into left hand path. Um, but for, like I said, for me, it's, I am a manifestation of the divine that is everywhere, is part of everything. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 um, I, yeah, I think it would be interesting to, you know, look at many different kind of witches. And I guess it all kind of comes down to <laughs> your, where your definition of deity you know, is deity with outside, within you, everywhere, nowhere, you know, what ism do you follow kind mm -hmm. of might, might help with the definition or, or sort of figuring out where you fall in the left hand, right hand bath dichotomy. Well, and I also, I also feel like even for us, like, even though we are these coven witches, and that is a very RHP thing, like most of our ideals are left hand path, like the empowerment of self, the self deification, like individuality, even though we're an affiliated group, like it's still the individual first. Right. And then we all come together to make that group. So I don't know, I really feel like I'm more of like an ambidextrous. That's how <laughs> I would say it. Instead of like just right-handed or left-handed, I think being more ambidextrous with it is probably, I think the best way to like stay out of the ego traps that becomes right and left-hand path if you go too far into the extreme. Something else interesting that I have seen with a lot of um, LH peers, even just in my local community is not that this isn't an issue on the right-hand path as well, but I think the right-hand path has different issues. And so one of the things that I think separates the two are substances, right? A big one, I think, separates the two. <laughs> Substance use, alcohol, and um, or other things used in a spiritual or religious sort of way. Huh, I and I feel like the I feel like the RHP tends to be more conservative about substance use in a ritualized or spiritual way. And the LHP tends to it's more hedonistic. Right. Mm. I mean, and so I feel like maybe because of that, I do see and I feel like there is data that supports higher amounts of sub or more intense even substance abuse. It's almost like the void is screaming at them or something, or they get lost in like the void of the soul. And although, then I although I think, I mean, you could go right hand path. If you're talking abuse, substance abuse, the guilt uh, that is used within a lot of the right hand path, Christian specifically 
uh, religions and churches, the guilt associated with being a member of that and sinning and doing, you know, breaking the commandments or, or not following God's will would then repress people's emotions and they may be looking for a way to self-soothe themselves and oh, for sure. to use substances and abuse it in that way. No, for sure. That's just like something that I've definitely seen, um, you know, myself, even in my local community is a lot of LH peers seem like, but also to keep in mind my scope and my perspective of like, as witches, like I'm not, I'm, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And yeah. what I'm seeing is a lot of LH peers struggling more with substance abuse. But I also think that like, these are, ish these are just human issues. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's not like only left-hand pathers are having these issues. But I think because there's less taboos around it, maybe that's why it's more public. Maybe that's why it seems like a higher amount of LH peers suffer with substances more frequently than RH peers. Maybe RH peers just, they keep it closeted or they keep it, you know, behind their closed doors and because they're ashamed, you know, one of the many things that <laughs> you can be ashamed of when you're following that kind of uh, religion or spiritual religion, I, I would say religion, you know? And I do, I do think when you said like, I think RHP tends to just be the default. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's why, I think you're right. I think that's why there are people who don't necessarily like, I, I've yet to meet someone who's like, I'm a right hand pather. Yeah, you know? I've never, I've never met anybody who has ever said that ever. <laughs> But on the on the flip side to it, like everyone who's on the left hand path wants you to know that they're on the left hand path. I agree. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, and then I also think too, like if we think about this, when we think about like magic or like sorcery, there's also like you know the left hand is the bad hand, right? And yeah. so I think that that kind of like supports almost this narrative that once again, the the right hand path is the right hand path. Yeah. Like, and I don't, I don't think that that's true either. Like, I think that ideologies of the right-hand path in any given circumstance when taken to extremes can be like equally or more harmful. I agree. I think that I, I, I agree with the original statement you had said that either extreme, you know, whether you're extreme left-hand path with like completely just consumed by it or right-hand path completely consumed by it. I think the extremes are just, in my opinion, not a healthy place to be. Uh, hell no, absolutely <laughs> not. And, you know, I, I'm pretty sure when I was reading about like some of the Tantra origins of this, um, they have two other names, which I don't remember, but like it is, there is also a belief that the left-hand path is a quicker way of gaining or harnessing power, authority, whatever, but it's thought to also be more dangerous. That makes so sense. So even, even kind of in the source material, like the left-hand path is kind of skewed, I feel like, as something bad or evil, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I think, and, and I think it probably is um, considered that because you are not looking to higher source, the gods, the universe to guide you. You're taking it all on yourself and there is no, like no opposing force. You know, there's no opposing force. So there's no one to check with. You're just following you and what you say is, is the right thing. And it, you're the only power there is, and there's nothing greater because you are greater. And so I can definitely see how that can sort of, sort of warp your sense of wholeness, maybe. I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, I also think too, like some of, very, very prominent people within Abrahamic religions that are in places of power, I think they're actually more left-hand path than they think that they are. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like they support and they uphold this right-hand path narrative and space, but are they themselves really? Yeah, I know. 
we're not going to know because they're not going to tell us. <laughs> I mean, you can't, I, I struggle to really believe someone with like a mega church with millions and they're like collecting all these tithes and not, not housing people during a natural disaster in their mega churches. Um, I struggle to believe that that is someone with values of the right hand path. I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and this is something else that really is connected to the topic of left hand path, Satanism, Luciferianism, but isn't completely in line with this topic. If I can derail this just for a moment. Um, I think I've to told you about this before, but like me and some of my friends, like some of our favorite activities on like a girl's night, right? Like face masks, wine, evangelical television. It's horrible. And also, even if you go on YouTube and type in witch's testimony, right? You've got all these people and they all have the same story, right? Mm -hmm. Like they come from a troubled background. They started smoking things and listening to heavy metal music. <laughs> You know, it's it's the satanic panic era material mm -hmm. that I'm talking about, like that older evangelical like material from like the 90s. You know, you've got this lady who she's what, probably like in her 30s, 40s or 50s now, maybe even older. But like this is typically when she's having her testimony, because, you know, when she was a young 20 something, she was a great satanic high priestess, led a coven, practiced witchcraft and magic, read Harry Potter, you know what oh, I mean? God. Was doing all types of dark sided yoga, playing with crystals. <laughs> and she worshiped the god Sam Hain. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's like, can you not even do your, like, can you not even do a little bit of, like, research to where, like, if actual witches are watching this, like, we, like, because surely there is a testimony like that where someone, I mean, Doreen Virtue lost her virtue. I know, right? Someone says the screen is blank. I think we're okay. Yeah, I don't know. I see things fine on my end. Okay. Like on I'm my not, phone and I'm my not, computer. Yeah, I'm not on YouTube, so I don't know what YouTube is is showing. Yeah, I'm on YouTube and it's showing it just fine on my end. Okay, then little maybe red says not on not on her end either. So then, if your screen is blank, I suggest you refresh your page. Chat is crazy tonight. I was going to try to look through and see what people are saying. Um, but um, what do you like? What what do you think you make of that? Like this phenomenon of like a witch's testimony to Christ. I've seen some of those, like you were saying, I not, I don't sit and watch a whole bunch of them, but every so often I fall into the rabbit hole on YouTube and I'll come across one of them and I'll, I'll listen. I'm curious. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't speak for someone else. Um, but I, I laugh at most of them. I just, yeah, I think a lot of it is completely right. fabricated and like made up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I think that that's a testament too of the fanaticism that is entertained also like on the right-hand path and the left-hand path. Like this sense of like othering the other side or like, oh, we're of a higher, higher cream of the crop or something. Like, because we think like this and we move like this and we do like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I really, even those individuals that uh, feel that they've turned, you know, they're, they're turning to God and going towards the light and leaving the shadow. And I think clearly they're missing something and they're searching for something. And you know what, if God, Jesus is where they feel that they need to be, then they need to be there, you know? Um, and hopefully it brings them some kind of solace and, and peace and, uh, comfort, you know? Um, but I don't think, um, 
damning other people who follow different paths is going to bring you that enlightenment and peace and calm because clearly if you have to judge other people there is some sort of turmoil within you uh i don't go around telling christians that they're wrong you know and i i i think and i wouldn't consider myself completely right hand path so i don't know i think there's something just a little off with that kind of thing no, I do too. For, uh, Mary, can I can I highlight these? I forget. Yeah, those witch testimonies are freaking hilarious. Had anyone seen ones done by ex Satanists? I have not. If we can ever figure out how to do that, that would be a fun evening, like to stream and then with a multi box or something like you, me, and then a screen of like funniest clips, best moments of like, you know what I mean? That would yeah, be, yeah. we could do that. That would be super fun. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing here. And um, this, this chart here that I'm looking at in terms of left-hand path. Oh, whoa. <laughs> in terms of left-hand path, right-hand path, this, uh, this thing that this mount is, um, she needs some, she needs some help. But I think that this is a really good way also to of defining left hand path and right hand path, especially for those who are just now tuning in, or if you're watching this as a replay to kind of put things in a more concise, according to this chart, the main thing about left hand path is being versus right hand path is becoming. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think that's a really good analogy. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Um, and then we have like the exaltion of dark and then the exaltion of light. But I do think that things that might be traditionally like associated with the light, like, like we were just talking about these mega churches, not bringing in people during natural disasters, only solely focusing on themselves. Like, obviously this is an, ex an, an extreme case here, like left-hand path people while they, while there is this idea of self deification, I don't think that it necessarily has to equate to um, being selfish. Like you can still care about people. Right. I think the, <clears throat> worst, the, the words that we use, uh, selfishness, black magic or dark worker or whatever, I think um, those are taken, can be taken out of context. And I mm -hmm. think someone who is focused on themselves doesn't mean that they're selfish. I just like when, uh, for me, especially, I've had problems creating personal boundaries in my past, you know, and being on the right hand path, being altruistic, putting everybody else before me was unhealthy. So for me to focus on myself means the ability to put up personal boundaries. Now, if someone else looks at that and because they're altruistic, they may call me selfish. But for me, focusing on the self is healthy, is a healthy mm -hmm. thing. So putting myself first doesn't necessarily mean um, bad or wrong. It means that I put myself first in order for me to be able to help other people. You know? Absolutely. Exactly. And I think you got to put the mask on yourself first, right? Like mm -hmm. to me... I don't read that as being a narcissist and trying right. to be a narcissist. I read that as be the best version that you can be so that you can do great and be great for this world and for this experience. Like that's, right. I think also how most LHPers see it. Right. I agree. But I think other people looking at that can interpret it. Yeah. In, in, yeah. in ways that they want to interpret it. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I also feel the same way about like the word like judgment like mm -hmm. that's a double-edged sword too like you should be using your critical thinking skills and judging things but yeah, like another thing here that um this chart separates the two um and this is this is from my thoughts born from fire wordpress this is just something i found on like a google image search so i'm not really sure about this source here but another thing that's on here is left hand path is associated with hidden um while the right hand path is associated with what's evident i think that that's also another interesting association because i do feel like a lot of right hand pathers definitely tend to be more 
reconstructionist, uh, right-hand path pagans, I would say. Okay. Um, right-hand path pagans and right-hand path like sort of witches. It's like they want to do what is historically known that has been done. Like it's not 2022 and like times have changed. Things are different. Maybe sacrificing a dog to Hecate is illegal where you live. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, versus I, f I feel like the idea of personal gnosis UPG is much more supported in the left-hand path variety because you are God. But I could also argue that UPG could also be right-hand path being that the gods would imbue, imbue knowledge to you because you are reaching to become a God and you are not yet there. Mm -hmm. So I think that can be both. But if you're recon, well, I don't know. I don't know. But I think that hidden is is interesting to associate with left hand path. Okay, what do you think about this? The next one's passive is associated with left hand path, and active is associated with right hand path. I disagree. Do you think that it's the opposite? Yes, I do. Why? How so? I think left hand path is active because, and here's my thought. If I am God, then I am going to use my power to manifest what I want. If I am becoming like a God, I am going to wait for the gods to enlighten me. So I'm going to be more passive. That's what I would think. But I don't know if no, I, I can see that. Two, I, I don't know if that. I would associate those two with, with that. Well, I think that this source when I'm going down the list here, it kind of seems like they're associating left-hand path or yin energy with all things traditionally, you know, feminine. Like the, the words they have listed here are dark, hidden, passive, absorbing, and feminine. Oh. Yeah, and then the words they have here on right-hand path are light, evident, active, expelling, and masculine. I think those should be switched. <laughs> the, mas <laughs> the masculine and feminine, I would switch. But that could just be my UPG. I don't know where <laughs> I would place them. I don't know where I would place them. Like masculine and feminine on the left-hand path, right-hand path sort of conversation. I don't even know if I feel like those even really belong in. I would say, I mean, when I think of masculine and feminine, I think of a spectrum, you know, masculine, complete masculine on one mm -hmm. end feminine on the other end and then this whole spectrum in between and the majority of people fall somewhere in between um mm -hmm. i've always said in the past if you meet someone who is all the stereotypical masculine they're going to be a douchebag if you meet uh every someone who is 100 percent what you would associate with feminine they're going to be a pushover people generally are somewhere in between the two you know we have mm -hmm. everything within us so I don't know. I mean, if you're saying that complete left hand all the way on one end and complete right hand path all the way on the other, I don't know. I don't feel like left hand path is passive and receptive. And I feel like left hand path is doing and, and activating and manif actively changing your reality. You're not waiting for some God to do it for you. You're no, doing I agree. It yourself. I don't know. I agree. I completely agree. Cause I just thought it was an interesting like chart and like the choices of words were yeah. like words I would associate would be like the community and self. Like those would be, you yeah. know, more communal, more, more tribal minded more yeah. pack mentality versus more lone wolf, more solitary. Like that would be, I think, a good exchange there. I also too think that left-hand path, because it is so much more, I feel like about empowering yourself, then I feel that the right, I mean, the right-hand path, these religions can be empowering for people too. They can, they can. But I don't think that that's necessarily the focus is power. Like I feel like the focus is more like, peace over power 
If you were a god, you would not walk past something you didn't like without making it better. If you're trying to become god, you would go out of your way to make it better either way it's in the actions. I agree. I agree. I agree, too. Yeah, I, and, and, and Milton also said, um, masculine and feminine is not referring to it as a gender role, but referring to it as an alchemical role. Uh, penetrative and receptive forces, some cases directly referring to an acid and a base. And I understand that. Um, so if you're looking at masculine as then a receptive, so is that a base and feminine is the acid? I saw someone earlier was like asking if Buddhism would be more right hand path or left hand path. And looking at, the, and this is just a Wikipedia article, by the way, this is this reference, it's just a Wikipedia article. And it says left hand path relation to Tantra and Buddhism. Um, in Buddhist Tantra, the right hand path symbolizes the male aspect, which is associated with compassion and skillful means. And the left hand path represents the female aspect, which is associated with wisdom and emptiness. Ritual handheld attributes, such as like the bell, the lotus, um, arrow, curved knife, skull cup, sword, shield, hook, rope, snare, you know, are placed in the right and left hands respectively. They symbolize the union of active male aspect with the contemplative female aspect. In both Hinduism and Buddhism, the goddess is always placed on the left hand side. Hmm. Maybe that's maybe that's why feminine was put on the left as opposed to the right. Um, the goddess is always placed on the left-hand side of the male deity, where she sits on his left thigh while her lord places his left arm around her shoulder and dallies with her left. Okay, that's in the <laughs> article. <laughs> uh, in representations of the Buddha's image, the right hand often makes an active mudra of skillful means, the earth touching, protection, fearless, wish granting, or teaching mudra, while the left hand often remains in the passive mudra of meditative, resting in the lap and symbolizing meditation on emptiness or wisdom. So I'm not really sure the middle path. Yeah, I don't know. The middle ground. It's, it, it's, it, it's interesting because if I think in my own practice, my own uh, witchcraft practice, and I think of the right hand, my actual right hand, it is my hand that is projecting energy. It's the it's the hand that you know does the direction. It's it's the projection in the left hand for me is receptive. So if I'm thinking of it in that way then left hand for me would be receptive and right hand path would be projective and action. But that's not how I think of the left hand and right hand paths. So I have mm -hmm. a little contradiction going in, in here with my brain. Um, and the middle path per this is also a T in Buddhism as well. I feel like that's probably Buddhism's like one of the key components here is like really focusing on this middle way or this middle path. And it says essentially what we've been saying about trying to maintain or keep a balance as to not fall into the extremes of self gratification on one hand or self mortification on the other hand. And I think that ties in nicely with what you were mentioning when we were talking about substance abuse and like the shame associated with addiction mm -hmm. um, per this self mortification. And I think that like, I mean, that just makes, com that just seems like common sense is the middle ground to right, me. Right, right. Yeah, I think a good balance would be good for the individual. Yeah, that, that is exactly, that is exactly what I was saying too. Mm -hmm. uh, I consider the feminine more intuitive slash working with the sub or unconscious mind while masculine is more active and doing using consciousness. You need to text to manifest. I totally agree. I remember in like circa 2016, 2015, watching all of these Wiccans on YouTube. And at the time I very much identified with a lot of eclectic Wicca. 
And I remember watching a lot of these altar tour videos and that's what a lot of us did. Like we put, there was like a masculine and a feminine side of the altar. Yep. Yep. Or tools that were associated in that way. Yep. Back in the day I did that too. Not anymore, but. (laughs) What do you feel like made that shift for you? Well, the whole. If you can share. Well, it, it's, it's that whole, uh, I, there's a video on my channel. I know you've seen it and we talked about it briefly. Uh, it was the whole transition, just transition within my own practice and transition um, starting with the dissolution of my coven and just moving towards everything that followed. Um, mm-hmm. It's just that whole, the whole shift. A big thing is not working with a personified God or goddess. I mean, when I was, when I identified as Wiccan, I mean, I was working with the gods, very specific gods that I worked with. Um, There's no specific god for me anymore or goddess, you know. So that's a big big change for me. And ritual, um, my um, when I was Wiccan, uh, very much ritual and sabbats and very much a practice. Uh, My witchcraft is a practice now, but it's not ritualistic in any sense there is no it's more spontaneous it's more um yeah spontaneous it's it's very different it's very different do you feel like um having the sabbats in your practice would make that more right hand path no i i no i well it depends um, I still celebrate the solstice and the equinoxes, but that's about it. Oh, and like Samhain. Um, but that's for different reasons than, than because it's a Sabbat. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think that. I don't know. Determine whether it's right. At least for me, I don't think it would. It, it's for me, it's the focus of, of, you know, looking to deity for me that that does a difference between right hand and left hand path Mm -hmm. and something that's something too that i see like especially a lot on like tiktok and witch talk is like there is a lot of very interesting upg out there um that is especially on tiktok like people having experiences where they claim that they're matron or patron deities they're having an intimate adult relationship with them. I've heard things like that before. <laughs> like, I've heard oh, like that before. It's yeah. it's the wild west. It is the wild. I west. know, it right? Really is, <laughs> and I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would think that the sabbats. I would think since that's kind of falling more in line with like an organized thought and like organized tradition I feel like left-hand path is so anti-tradition and is so into accepting the taboo um and like the rejecting of normalcy which whatever normalcy really is right Right. but I would I would think that like if there are holy days as a part of your practice for example like if there's a traditional element to it then I think that that's more right than left But you can look at Satanism and they have traditional sacred days or unsacred or, you know, unholy days. Yes, unholy days. They do. And they're so left hand path. But even even as much as they're trying not to be traditional, they have traditional, uh, you know, depending on what type of Satanism you practice they have traditional ways of doing things. Well, that's why I kind of, that's why I kind of think (laughs) like, like, is there really truly, because there's plenty of LHP within RHP spaces too, like mm -hmm. we had mentioned. And I think that that's like, I still think that I, to me, that kind of further proves the point that like, by not conforming, you are conforming, like still, (laughs) like, so you're really not out of the matrix. Like, some of them think that they are. It's very much like the whole idea. If I don't make a decision that I'm not choosing a side, but in fact, when you're not making a decision, you are eventually making a decision and not making a decision. Kind <laughs> of 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, and we've talked about this before too, but I think that one of the big shifts for me was just like, I've never really, like I've worked with male deities or spirits in the past before, but it's never been a huge focal thing for me. Like, and then also my own relationship with gender has changed so much Mm -hmm. that like, I'm kind of like, why am I separating this like this? Like, it really doesn't need to be separated like this. It really doesn't. And also like, I really enjoyed your video that you made recently about altars um, and thinking about like, what purpose is this really serving? Like, what is it really doing for me to have a masculine and feminine side of my altar? Mm-hmm. Like, how am I using that? Or is this just like a pretty thing to look at? Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I, I definitely liked your analogy of the workbench, an altar yeah. kind of being like a workbench because that's definitely how I see it. Yeah. Like, and I do still celebrate at this time, you know, because things are on the internet and everything's permanent. And if you ever change your mind or opinion about God anything, forbid. people get yeah. right. Like if your if your practice ever evolves or changes, people get so upset about it. So at this time, uh, nine forty seven Eastern Standard Time, March second, twenty twenty two Standard Time, <laughs> twenty twenty two. You know, I am celebrating the Sabbat still, and that's something that, like, I did when I identified as an eclectic Wiccan, and it's something that I still do now. And I keep like a little sabbatical altar that is more like maybe less like an altar and more like a shrine. Like, it's more like mm-hmm. a little thing I put together to like, you know, make for the Sabbat and make for the season those eight holy days. But then my altar altar is more like functionality as like a working altar Mm -hmm. a workbench where I'm actually doing stuff at and that's another reason that kind of made me think like why do I need to have this be this gendered space when I'm actually working and doing things at the altar and I don't even need some of this shit on here like yeah my I mean I have candles that represent certain things but I don't have it separated i did in the past this side was for the god this side was for the goddess specific personified deities and and the tools that went with each i i have done that in the past um yeah not anymore not anymore mary like part of seasonal decor so like i have some videos of it on my channel but basically i have this small table in my living room that I kind of like change for the holidays that I keep for that whole like season of that Sabbat. So like if I have this altar for Samhain, that's going to have like pictures of like my deceased loved ones on it. It's going to be very similar to like a day of the dead sort of remembrance kind of idea of like ancestors that I knew in the flesh, friends of the family that I knew in the flesh or, um, cultural ancestry artifacts and things like that but i'll keep that on there until we start shifting into the season of yule so it's kind of more just like it's a focal point of my house it's kind of in the center of my home and i look at it and pass by it every single day so i guess like the purpose that it's serving is it's not just decor because it does serve the purpose of like I, i feel like kind of keeping me in line with the current the current current the current current <laughs> mm-hmm. the current tide uh irish i i do have a couple of videos i think the altar tour and update video really goes into why i shifted and what i'm practicing now since i kind of took a hiatus from youtube and a lot of things have changed during the time so you can just go back i don't want to rehash all all of that it's boring to rehash everything all over again so just go watch that video. It's not very long. My videos are not very long. I'm so glad that you're back, though. Oh, thank you. I'm glad nice that you're back. Be, it's nice to be back. Um, although, you know, I, you know my dilemma, trying to come up with things to talk about that haven't been talked about 10 million different times. It's well, that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited that we're doing this collab and that next week you're coming on my channel for us to talk yes. about social media and witchcraft, which we're yes. doing next Wednesday. Because I feel like, and I mean this in a very complimentary way, but you've been in at least the witchy YouTube scene for like really as long as I've probably been legitimately practicing as an adult. Probably. Because I think I can remember about the time you showed up. I mm-hmm. was like, she is interesting. <laughs> I think I think that like you've seen a lot right, of changes. How many years has it been? Because 
I remember it's been over. Being it's been about young. over ten years. Yeah, I, I when I, I first came on, the young. <laughs> when I first came onto YouTube, I was like twenty one, maybe. Yeah, you were young. I think I think it's been about ten years though, because I've been practicing like legitimately. You know, like I've been interested in witchcraft longer, but mm -hmm. I'm saying like legitimately, actually having a practice yeah. and practicing and like exploring my religious beliefs for about 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I know it was when I was the high priestess of the coven. I know. Mm -hmm. So that's been a long time ago. Well, and I think it'll be like, that's why I think talking to you specifically will be interesting because I want to talk about using social media as a witchcraft tool too. Yeah. Like I want to talk about using social media as a tool within the craft and the digital space that we now have. It's not just the physical and the, and the astral. Um, it's the digital world too, but also like the changes and how social media has changed our modern witchcraft as you know, Western culture yeah. Yeah. and comparing it's, it's an interesting topic. It's an interesting topic. I ran a, a digital coven, so I'll have a lot to say in regards to that. Along with the physical coven, I had a digital coven too. So that'll be interesting to talk about. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, someone asked, is Lilith left or right? I'd say left too. What do you think? I mean, I think that religions of the left-hand path commonly, most typically like Satanism and Luciferianism tend to, you know, exalt her. But I do think that you could take right-hand path ideology in a way where, like, I don't necessarily, I don't know if I think that gods are right or left. I, know. I think I was, we well, I are was, right or left. I was just going to say that in general, I think of gods as right-hand only because you're depending on your view of the gods. And I think that's really where it comes down to. For me, when I think of the gods, I think of an outside force. Right. I think of an out, unless I'm drawing down the moon or I am channeling the gods, but even then I am stepping aside and allowing the gods to use my physical vessel. So I think of the gods as right hand. But then you can look at individual gods and say, okay, Lilith is all about liberation and all about self-empowerment. Well, then you might say she is sort of like a left-hand path god. Mm -hmm. But she's still an outside force, unless mm -hmm. you view her as you are the in incarnation of Lilith. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. And also, too, there's Solomonic magic. And I feel like that, mm -hmm. like, if we're talking about spirits in the left-hand path, um, because I agree with you, like, I think the very concept of God itself is kind of more right than left because left is about being the God, not working with or worshiping or whatever the God, it's about being the God. Um, but when people are working in a more like I would say that a more left-handed path sort of way to work with spirits or gods would be more commanding, controlling, enslavement of spirits, entrapment of spirits. I consider that to be if if we were thinking about maybe left and right styles of practice versus like asking permission for. But are you when you are I, I guess it for me it would depend on how you're defining the spirits. If you're doing a hierarchy of spirits and you're saying these are the gods and these are other spirits, then are you still looking at the gods as an outside force that would enlighten you? Because if you're looking at them in that way and you're still trying to trap them, I would question whether that's right hand or left hand. If you're looking at the gods as just another spirit, another spiritual entity, entity that isn't greater than but equal to you, then I would say that's more of a left-hand view of these spiritual entities. Well, I mean, angels are often like asked permission and prayed to and whatever and whatever to control demons. Like, you know, so I, I definitely see that too. Like that's, yeah. you're still asking permission and asking for power from an outside source. So I can see the right-handed pathness of that too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Definitely. If you're asking something to, if, if you need to ask, if you need to ask, then I would say for me, that's right hand path. Because if I am a God, I don't have to ask. Mm -hmm. I just do. I don't know. Just do it. I, yeah, just do it. Just whip up that circle, get them in there, and you command them to do what you want. Lilith is a primal force. Yeah. Guards are not right or left because they are both. Oh, I should highlight this. They are both penetrative and receptive. They will give you ideas and receive praise to do the magic for the practitioner. Why do you need them? You can do it yourself. Oh, I'm getting sassy now. That vodka's getting to my head. <laughs> that vodka's just going pew, right into my head. Oh, yeah. Gods are, and gods, um, God, I like they come from within and without. Well, we are. So I guess for me, I mean, I see myself as a manifestation of the energies that make the gods and goddesses. So in that sense, at least for me now, my perspective now, it's changed. In that sense, why do I have to ask if I am a manifestation of the energy that is them? Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And my practice, it's like for me, I look at it more as like being a deva or a living incarnation of the deity and almost right. kind of like that power is from you. I don't know. I view the power as it's a part of you because we are a part of the gods, but right. like you can almost put on different deities. Like right. you can right. put on different spirits. It's sort of like aspecting. You can take mm -hmm. on the qualities or you can, you can channel. And, you know, I, I think, I feel like you can also, when you channel a spirit, you can take on parts, even when they, you are no longer channeling them you can still hold on to parts of that energy within you and use that. Yeah. I also, I also talked about this with a friend not too long ago too, but when I think about like my wider understanding of my personal cosmology, like I definitely think that we made the gods. Like I think that the energy, and this is controversial yet brave to say, but I think that like the energy might be primordial and there is cosmic primordial arcane energy mm -hmm. but i think that like the personified versions of this cosmic energy is a very earthly thing mm -hmm. like i agree and i don't think god made us in his image i think we made the gods and images of ourselves i agree so i agree controversial yet brave controversial yet brave. because if, if you get a group of individuals coming together and pulling that energy in the same way and shaping it in the same way, then you're going to get a, a Aragor, a thought form of the energies that are already there and you're shaping it and sculpting it to become a personified God or goddess, I think too. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's seven o'clock. So yeah, I should end the stream. <laughs> it's been well, thanks. thanks for having me on. Of course. So yeah, Jasmine was mentioning I'll be on her channel next week. So if you enjoyed our conversation, which of course you did, you know you did, you want to come over to her channel and, and um, listen to us and, and chit chat about social media and witchcraft or however yeah. you have it phrased. Yeah. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that conversation. And um I definitely think that it's like, there's a lot of directions we can take that in, I think. I agree. I agree. So thank you all. Thank you all for joining in. It's Thanks, been, everyone. Have a good night. See you next week, right? See you next week over on her channel. <laughs> Don't forget. Love you all. Blessed be.